Hello, this is Paul Shearer with InformedCIO.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the topic of virtualization and fault tolerance. We're going to see if we can figure out how to make the free version of VMware Server fault tolerant. Um, typically fault tolerance is a feature that you would have to pay VMware for. You'd have to make use of the ESX product and infrastructure manager. What we're going to attempt to do is use the free products and see if we can make this work. First thing that we're going to do though is take a look at how cluster is currently configured. We open up cluster Administrator and notice that we have one cluster group created called VM. Within VM the only thing that we have is one disk resource. We don't need a machine name here, we don't need an IP address, we don't need anything other than simply a shared disk that has the ability to reside on whatever node we want to run our virtual machine on. I'm going to go ahead and start up our VM now. Give me just a second here. And to start it up we're going to use the VMware-CMD command. with a start option. So notice on this command the uh, the middle part of it is the path to get to the VMX file. So we hit start or hit enter, we go back to the VMware console. We see that our machine is now starting. We'll wait very patiently as it starts up. All right, we're now going to send a control alt delete to our uh, VM and we're going to log in. All right, we're going to open up one of the most performance intensive applications known to God and man. Notepad. And we are going to tell the world Hello. Alright, now that we have our application up and running on the VM, we're going to go back and we're going to send another command to it. This time, we're going to tell it to suspend. And if we go back to our VM console, we see that we get a pop-up window telling us that it is saving the virtual machine state. And the machine is now down. Alright, once again going back to uh, our command prompt. We're going to run a command to move the cluster group to a different node. Now I'm doing this all from, uh, from a command prompt because these commands are easily scriptable. And that would be the, uh, the key to actually really setting this up in a uh, fault tolerant scenario. Right, we're waiting while it moves our uh, disk resources over to SCLABENT11. It should take just a minute. If we look at Cluster Administrator, we can see where it's at in the process. And they're still on turn and offline pending steps. And we're coming up now back to our prompt. It's done. All right. So at this point, we're going to go to um, 
ENT11. Log back in. And give me just a second here. I find it's much easier to cut and paste for these demos. And now we're going to run the command to start our virtual machine. And looking at Task Manager, we should see it's starting to use some resources here in just a minute. And actually, I'm going to minimize this, and we're going to open up VMware Console to see what our local host is doing. And look at that. We are now running on the other node of the cluster, and our application is still up and still functioning. As you can imagine, this has got a lot of really cool ramifications um, from a system maintenance standpoint. Let's say that you're having a very difficult time scheduling outages to do hardware maintenance on a specific uh, host server. Well, now you can take all of the virtual machines that are running on it, keep the applications running, and simply shuffle them off to another node in your cluster. Extremely cool functionality, and as I said before, this was all done using the free version of the product. This has been Paul Shearer with Informed CIO, wishing you a great day and hoping that you visit my website and visit my sponsor links. Have a great day. Bye.